In despair, he shouts, death, 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 take us all. And without taking any counsel or waiting for any reinforcements uh, from the city, he and his host charge back into battle while his voice is heard shouting, death, ride to ruin in the world's ending. Now, at this point, it becomes clear that Aomer is no longer fighting uh, for victory. That's not an option as far as Aomer is concerned. Uh, but rather he's fighting for the sake of a particular kind of defeat. Where earlier the Rohirrim had sung while they fought, now the text says uh, they sang no longer. Uh, they sang no more. Death they cried with one voice, loud and terrible, and gathering speed like a great tide. Their battle swept about their fallen king and passed, roaring away southwards. To hope's end I rode into heart's breaking, now for wrath, now for ruin, and a red nightfall. These staves Aomer spoke, yet he laughed as he said them. For once more lust of battle was on him, and he was still unscathed, and he was young, and he was king, the lord of a fell people. And lo, even as he laughed at despair, he looked out again on the black ships, and he lifted up his sword to defy them. Oh, there's the turn. And then wonder took him, and a great joy, and he cast his sword up in the sunlight and sang as he caught it. And all eyes followed his gaze, and behold, upon the foremast ship a great standard broke, and the wind displayed it as she turned towards the harland. There flowered a white tree, and that was for Gondor. So this emotional roller coaster that Tolkien puts us on, he puts Aomer on, uh, the swinging us from the one extreme of Aomer's sense of despair and impending defeat to the thrill of discovering that what you thought was your enemy coming to kill you is in fact your friends and your allies coming to rescue you. That's what Tolkien calls eucatastrophe. And that's how Tolkien would have us read and to feel and to experience the gospel.